these uh, women who organized for peace in the 19, in the World War I period were amazingly well organized and uh, it's astonishing when you actually look at their records, which is what we're now doing, what we discover. These documents come from the Lillian Wald papers in the Columbia Rare Book and Manuscript Library. And they record uh, some of the early efforts to organize and bring together groups of women at that conference in The Hague that you mentioned. Yeah, the first conference was April 28th to May 1st. We have the dates here, 1915, and they're going back to The Hague to see if they can't be influential in setting up what becomes the peace to end the Great War in 1918. Unfortunately, they're not very successful in actually establishing a peace that uh, ends all, war. Ends all yes. war. And yet, when we look at the letterhead of this document, we see that many of the people on this letterhead are the same people who set up the organization in 1915. So we've got Jane Addams. Uh, well, we have um, the international group, including Crystal McMillan from London, Aletta Jacobs uh, from the Netherlands, Rosa Manis from Germany. Um, these were the international women. They were, and if we look... And then here at the lists of those invited, this is actually quite fascinating. Right. And Carrie Chapman Catt actually becomes a great anti-war activist. Mm. Um, Carrie Chapman Catt, Carrie the, Chapman, suffragist. the suffragist. And why wars, um, she asked Eleanor Roosevelt to write a, a, a chapter in a book called Why Wars Are Obsolete. Mm. So Why Wars Are Obsolete is a book that Carrie Chapman Catt edits. But I see here to your point about suffragists, there's Carrie Chapman Catt, there's Anna uh, Howard Shaw. Mary Emma Woolley, the president of Mount, Mount Holyoke. Holyoke College. Right. Um, Mrs. William I. Hull, which is maybe Cordell Hull's mother at Swarthmore. But look, also Leonora O'Reilly, who we've talked about as a trade union activist. Yes, the National Women's Trade, trade union, union League. League. Right. And then there are Nancy, Lucy Biddle Lewis from Pennsylvania, the, a Quaker. The Biddles are very famous American Friends Service Committee Quakers. Mary McDowell here as... Uh, National YWCA, and that's very important because the National YWCA becomes so important for the civil rights movement. All the very, very early anti-segregation activities are right. here, and she's on the, um, she lives at Hull House with, as part of Jane uh, Addams. That's fascinating yes. because the YWCA, we know, was one of the first organizations to try to integrate uh, black and white women yes. in a social organization or a social reform organization. Right. And Wonderful. And here's Lillian Wald, Sophonisba Breckenridge. Breckenridge, also from Hull House. And, um, and who becomes very deeply involved in the child labor, anti-child labor right. movement and in the children's Bureau and, and Grace, Grace Abbott, Abbott, who is also a Children's Bureau. She was the founding president, president of, the of the Children's Bureau. Bureau. Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Gilman, the author. Charlotte Perkins Gilman, the author of the Yellow Wallpaper, and one of the first to oppose motherhood as a single, uh, solitary activity of right. a woman's. Yes, women have life. always worked. Women have always worked. Right. It's fascinating because what the names on this document reveal is that that network that we talk about in an abstract sense is actually a right here. real yeah. network. It's a real network. Women have always worked and they have marched, marched. Shoulder, to to shoulder. shoulder to shoulder.